My name is Professor Hilary Hines from the Department of English Literature and Creative Writing at Lancaster University. And I'm going to be talking briefly here about John Milton's epic poem, Paradise Lost, which you'll be, you won't be studying the whole thing, but you will be studying sections from this poem in the course of the um, introductory course to English literature that you'll be studying this year. So I just want to make some, as I say, I want to make some suggestions of things that you might want to talk about, just three or four things that uh, might help you navigate your way through this poem. So first thing, um, well, Paradise Lost, as you will know, recounts the um, biblical story of the the fall of mankind, the um, the eating of the forbidden fruit in paradise by first of all Eve uh, and then Adam. Uh, they knew as they ate that uh, this was forbidden to them. God had made this clear in multiple ways, multiple occasions that this was forbidden, but nonetheless they both decide to eat. Uh, this fruit and the consequences we all know, the fall of mankind, um, the advent of original sin and the whole sorry saga of human history that that followed from that. In telling you what happens, of course, I'm not really introducing any spoilers. This is probably one of the best known um, stories of Western culture. In many ways, it's a kind of foundational story of Western culture. So as we start to read the poem, we read, I guess, in a way that's rather different from the way that we might usually read. We read not so much to find out what is happening. We already know what's going to happen. Um, there are no surprises in, uh, in the events of the story that Milton is going to unfold for us. So I guess one question is, well, what therefore keeps us reading? If it's not suspense, if it's not a page turner, if we're not wondering um, where this is all leading, what's the motivation? What's the motivation for reading? Um, where is the suspense in this poem? And one answer, I think there are a number of answers to that, but one thing you might want to think about is whether that suspense is detectable in some ways in the way that the poem is written. Even I would suggest at the level of the sentence. Just re if you just read the first half dozen lines of the poem, um, you will see that Milton um, inverts the usual grammatical sequencing of, if you like, the sentence that makes up those opening lines. Of man's first disobedience and the fruit of that forbidden tree, whose mortal taste brought death into the world and all our woes, with loss of Eden till one greater man restore us and regain the blissful seat, sing, heavenly muse, that on the secret top of Oreb or of Sinai didst inspire that shepherd who first taught the chosen seed in the beginning how the heavens and earth rose out of chaos, or if Sion Hill delight thee more, and Silo's brook that flowed fast by the oracle of God, I thence invoke thy aid to my adventurous song, that with no middle flight intends to soar above the Aeonian mount, while it pursues things unattempted yet in prose or rhyme. He he puts the um, the uh, different clauses, the different sections of that sentence in. Uh, a very different order from the way that we would typically um, recount that uh, that sentence. He leaves the main verb of that sentence until the end of the sentence. So that I would suggest introduces a level of suspense into the very kind of grammatical structure of the of the way the poem is written. We often have to wait for the grammatical component that will confirm meaning on the rest of the sentence right until the end of a particular gra grammatical unit 
whereas in everyday parlance, we would probably put it more towards the beginning or in the middle. So in a way, as we read, we're holding out, we're looking for that grammatical element that will give us the meaning of the sentence. And so I think there's a way in which even that mode of writing introduces a kind of suspense into the reading. There's something quite compelling about the way that this um, uh, this unconventional for, for us, this um, unorthodox word order um, keeps us reading.